Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're so happy to have you with us this day on this sixth Sunday in Epiphany as we join together as God's people here at St. Matthew's Church in Glendale, California for our virtual worship service. We're so happy to have you with us. Let us pray. Dear God, so often we have accepted the ways of the world and lost sight of the witness you would have our lives be. We choose safety and comfort rather than stand boldly and proclaim your mercy and grace. Too often we seek the world's acceptance and do not risk rejection by proclaiming your love. Forgive us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come before God, confessing our sin. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. Have mercy, O God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on eagles' wings, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the voice from heaven. You are my own. You are my beloved. God gives power to the weary, and God strengthens the powerless. Be cleansed, be healed, for in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of your sins and the revealing of God's reign. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, you whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. 
form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This morning is a paraphrase from Eugene Peterson's The Message, comes from Leviticus 19, verses 1 through 2 and 9 through 18. God spoke to Moses, speak to the congregation of Israel, tell them, be holy, because I, God, your God, am holy. When you harvest your land, don't harvest right up to the edges of your field or gather the gleanings from the harvest. Don't strip your vineyard bare or go back and pick up the fallen grapes. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. 
I am God, your God. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't deceive anyone. Don't swear falsely using my name, violating the name of your God. I am God. Don't exploit your friend or rob him. Don't hold back the wages of a hired hand overnight. Don't curse the deaf. Don't put something in front of the blind. Fear your God. I am God. Don't pervert justice. Don't show favoritism to either the poor or the great. Judge on the basis of what is right. Don't spread gossip and rumors. Don't stand by when your neighbor's life is in danger. I am God. Don't secretly hate your neighbor. If you have something against him, get it out into the open. Otherwise, you are an accomplice in his guilt. Don't seek revenge or carry a grudge against any of your people. Love your neighbor as yourself. I am God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 5, verses 38 through 48. Let us listen to the word of God to us this morning. Here's another old saying that deserves a second look. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Is that going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit back at all. If anyone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drags you into court and sues for the shirt off your back, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. And if someone takes unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit-for-tat stuff. Live generously. You're familiar with the old written law, love your friend, and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the energies of prayer. For then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. God gives God's best, the sun to warm and the rain to nourish, to everyone, regardless, the good and bad the nice and nasty. If all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anybody can do that. If you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner does that. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives toward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who persecute you. If you love only those who love you, why should you claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much. If anyone strikes you on the right cheek, offer the other also. And if anyone takes away your coat, give him your cloak as well. Give to everyone who asks from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them back. 
Do not do to others anything you would not have them do to you. Pass no judgment, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Be perfect, just as our Father in Heaven is perfect. Ask for this gift, and it shall be given you. Seek. And you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. What father refuses his child? If you who are imperfect know how to give what is good to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give to those who ask him? Today's reading from Matthew has been called the single most misunderstood teaching of Jesus. You've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Over the last 2,000 years, many have interpreted these words of Jesus to teach complete non-resistance. Jesus' words, do not resist an evildoer, have been taken to mean that a follower of Jesus must just let evildoers run all over them. If a person strikes you on one cheek, turn the other and let him strike you there as well. The problem with that reading of these words of Jesus is that it really does not fit with everything else we read about Jesus in the Bible. In all reality, throughout the Bible, Jesus always resisted evil. But just what does it exactly mean here to not resist. The Greek word used by Matthew, which we translate here as resist, is anti-stenai. Anti is familiar to us in English. Anti means against. Stenai means to stand. Thus, anti-stenai means to stand against. To stand against. Not really resist, but to stand against. Anti-stenai is used extensively in the Greek Bible, where it almost always is used as a term of war. Anti-stenai, to stand against, refers to the marching of two armies against each other until they collide in battle. Marching into battle against an enemy known as taking a stand. St. Paul writes, Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to anti-stenai, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day. St. Paul's image here is not of some punch-drunk boxer somehow managing to stay on his feet while he's being pummeled. Rather, St. Paul's image here is one of a person who just keeps on going. They never retreat they never give up. Thus, when Jesus says, do not resist an evildoer, what Jesus is really saying here is, do not resist with violence. Do not resist evil on its own terms. Don't let your enemy dictate to you the terms of how you will respond. For example, if I have a knife and my opponent has a rifle, I need to go get a rifle so that I can fight on equal terms. The problem with that is, when I get a rifle, my enemy will just go get a, a machine gun. Then I have to go and get a machine gun, 
leading to an arms race, which neither of us will ever truly win. Jesus here is telling us to break that spiral of violence. Do not resist an evildoer, meaning do not let yourself become the very thing you hate. Or as St. Paul later puts it, do not return evil for evil. In our reading from Matthew today, Jesus gives three examples of not returning evil for evil. And the first of these is, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Imagine for a moment that a person is about to attack you by striking a blow with their right fist at your face. A strike by someone's right fist will normally land on your left cheek. However, it is not the left cheek that Jesus mentions. Instead, Jesus says, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, right cheek. The only way that an attacker can use their right hand to strike your right cheek is not with a punch, but with a slap of the back of the hand. A slap of the back of the hand, which is not really about injuring someone, but about insulting someone. You see, a slap of the, ba of the back of the hand is symbolic. A slap of the back of the hand is intended to put an inferior back in their place. In that era, a slap with the back of the hand was usually given by, given by a master to a slave or by a Roman to a Judean. Th thus, what Jesus is really saying here is, when someone tries to humiliate you and put you down, simply turn your other cheek, thereby confounding your adversary. Think about it. If you turn the other cheek, you are defiantly saying, I refuse to be humiliated by you. I'm a human being just like you are. The second example of Jesus is, and if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. These seemingly odd words of Jesus actually deal very specifically with collateralized loans. Back in the first century, if a person needed a loan, they would normally use land or livestock as collateral. However, the law allowed the poorest of the poor to put up their outer garment as collateral. Their outer garment, which they would wear as a coat during the day, but which they would also sleep in at night. Lenders were allowed to keep a borrower's coat during the day as collateral. However, lenders were required to return a borrower's coat every night so that the borrower did not freeze. Return a borrower's coat every morning, which often gave lenders a chance to harass borrowers. Thank you.
made alive with God in Christ, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy and loving God, through the cross of Christ, continue your redeeming and unifying work among your people. Show us how to live well with each other as one family. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Strengthen the bonds between humans and the animals who work with them on farms, in households, and in emergency situations. Teach us all to value all animals. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Walk faithfully with those who find great joy in relationships and with those who experience the pain of broken relationships. Make the church a place where all people may come to know your loving companionship. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Lift up your children who are bent and broken in times of crisis or long periods of suffering. By your presence, restore their hope. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Guide and direct sisters and brothers in Christ who are engaged in specialized ministry for the sake of the world, especially the Federowitz family missionaries. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We bless you for the lives of the saints through whom you have revealed your love for the world. Continue to reveal your covenant life through us until the last day. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Gather these concerns and all who are in need into your abundant care, O God, remembering your promise of mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación. Y líbranos del mal. Amén. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación, y líbranos del mal. Amén. Padre nuestro, que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Amén. Let us pray. Bring us, O God, at our last awakening into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, 
No noise nor silence, but one equal music. No fears nor hopes, but one equal possession. No ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity in the habitations of your glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. Christ, whose glory is in the heavens, illuminate your hearts, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.